Fans is a sports apparel and team gear retailer based in Salt Lake City, Utah, which began operations in 1985. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified of my latest videos. Please hit that like button and leave a suggestion or a comment. You might see that in a future video. Thanks for watching and now back to a regular scheduled program. For the true sports fan, there's no place like fans. Fans has it all. From NFL jerseys, hats, and sweatshirts to NBA and Major League Baseball jerseys, hats, jackets, and tees. Fans even has cool sports gifts and ladies wear for all your favorite teams, including BYU and Utah, and is the official team for the Utah Jazz. Drop by your nearby fan store today. Located in most major malls along the Wasatch Front and now at the District in South Jordan. You can also shop fans 24 hours a day at fans.com. Fans began operations in 1985. The company was founded by Larry H. Miller. Miller was a businessman who made his start selling cars at his auto dealership. Throughout the 80s and early 90s, Miller acquired a number of automobile dealerships in Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico, creating the Larry H. Miller Automotive Group. By 2007, Miller was listed as the 10th largest U.S. automotive dealer with 42 dealerships and sales of $13.5 million. Larry became co-owner of the Utah Jazz professional basketball team when he purchased half an interest in the team in 1985 for $8 million and bought the remaining interest a year later. Miller and his companies, LHM Group, owned the Salt Lake Bees, owned more than 60 automotive dealerships throughout the Western United States, a variety of other ventures including Prestige Financial Services, Jordan Commons, Megaplex Theater, KJZZ TV, Miller Motorsports Park, the advertising agency Saxton Horn, and Vivint Arena. Fans specializes in sports apparel and team gear. They carry merchandise for college and professional baseball, football, as well as basketball teams. The company was based in Salt Lake City, Utah. The chain of sports apparel stores could often be found in malls. Fans was a small chain of stores in Idaho, Utah, Nevada, California, Colorado, New Mexico, and Texas. Expansion grew slowly, often from store to store. Fans had rarely, if ever, taken on debt. Fans was owned by the Larry H. Miller Group, the same group that owned the Utah Jazz. That line between organizations was often blurred as the CEO of Fans, Bob Hyde, did double duty as he was also the full-time CFO of the Utah Jazz. Conflict of interest? Hmm, I don't know. When you went to your favorite fan store in Utah, you'd find a variety of jazz apparel, but when the fan stores bought that shirt, they actually had to buy it with the minimum quantity. Those minimum quantities could range from small amounts like 50 to 100 to 500 to 1,000 depending on the shirt. The reasoning is that suppliers that make the apparel, Nike, Adidas, New Era, etc., are trying to make money. And if they know a team is not that popular, like the Utah Jazz, the minimum quantity would be higher because if making that shirt for a run of 100, they're not making a Golden State Warriors shirt that could easily be sold everywhere. One of the first major expansions was into California. Buying product for California would prove easy because California teams, save the Sacramento Kings, are pretty popular around the country. Fans could easily hit minimums while they were growing there and distribute the surplus around to other stores. The goal of the growth was to more densely populate these areas with their stores. They added more stores in Southern and Northern California. The other reason these stores did well was a result of brand recognition. For those of you who need a refresher on brand recognition, think McDonald's. If a new McDonald's opens up in your area, no one needs to tell you what McDonald's does. It has brand recognition. Due to fans already being in California, 
could more easily recognize that Fans was a sports apparel shop. This brand awareness was the key to California Store's success. When the California Store is showing positive returns, Fans then started moving towards more ambitious plans. The move east. Unlike the western expansion into California, Fans had difficulty moving into the Midwest and east. They didn't have brand recognition, they didn't have any existing storefronts, and they had no experience with the supply chain aspect of their business as it pertained to these new markets. They opened up stores in Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, New York, and Massachusetts. In the course of a year, they had grown from 45 stores to close to 100. Fans soon ran into some problems. There wasn't enough leadership to move around the stores, so local talent was brought in. This brought a breakdown in culture and procedures. Turnover was high in these stores, and another looming problem was inventory. Fans was at one point going to head 150 stores, except it didn't. Whether it was the losses fans took in the Midwest and Eastern stores, the increased cost of purchasing and shipping, cold feed or of upper management, lack of leadership, or all of it combined, fans decided not to increase stores and to take a step back, slow down, catch up, and then the following year they would ramp up again. Here's a little secret though, no business slows down when they're making money. But this move proved very costly to fans' business. When fans decided to abort on their continuing expansion and take a year off, they left themselves with only one remaining option when it came to dealing with the impending overstock problem. Hope that the new fan store opens up pent-up demand that wasn't forecasted. Or to put it simply, they had to hope it'd sell. It didn't happen. A nightmarish inventory problem occurred with the stores having back rooms filled with overstock merchandise of the same t-shirts. The problem was then compounded by the resilience in upper management to discount that product. Overstock grew. With no new stores being opened, the inventory sat unsold in back rooms and in off-site storage locations. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, fans was working with suppliers to see if they could return product, cancel orders, and find new homes for the overstock. This all happened while new orders were still being bought and shipped to stores. With overstock mounting, fans decided they had to do something drastic to cut down on the product. They, didn't, they still didn't discount it heavily, but they did put a major freeze on all new purchases. The Midwest and Eastern stores had a rough time during this period. New product was not going to be ordered unless inventory levels were brought down in each store location. Those isolated stores in the Midwest and the East had to dig their way out before they could see the light. Sales dropped while they were as a focus on enhanced merchandising to rotate the stale product. Turnover in these stores increased as the task of cycling through this inventory was sometimes insurmountable. Leadership rotated. In 2014, Steve Starks took over. His time there is what propelled him to the president of the Utah Jazz. He cleaned things up a ton, whether that was finding efficiencies in buying, creating better discounting practices in order to make faster inventory turns, and decided it was time to cut bait with a lot of the stores in the East that were weighing the company down. In 2013, Fans purchased the Northwest-based Just Sports Retailer. In 2018, the company's assets were sold by the Larry H. Miller Group of Companies to the Ames Watson Capital Investment Company and incorporated as Fans Gear, Inc. That same year, Genesco, the parent company of Lids Sports Group, sold the headwear retailer Lids for $100 million to Ames Watson Capital LLC, the company that owned and operates Fans. Ames Watson and Capital created the affiliate Fans Lids Holding to operate Lids. Lids, who operates 1,116 stores, combined with Fans, who had 120 stores in 22 states, each company keeping their name. So, what is your favorite memory of this place? Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. 
Hey, if you just watched my video, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C. Productions.